Hello and welcome to the first of a new series of videos on the John Caesars channel called Our Spiritual Heritage. And in this series of videos, we'll be looking back at all the publications of the Watchtower Society. Now, I can already hear you saying, hang on a minute, why our spiritual heritage, you're no longer a Jehovah's Witness? Well, for example, today we'll be reading the book You May Survive Armageddon Into God's New World, which was published in 1955, two years after my uh, my family first started being Jehovah's Witnesses on my dad's side. So it's as much my spiritual heritage as it is anyone else's, uh, just because I no longer believe every word or most of, <laughs> of what Jehovah's Witnesses teach uh, doesn't mean it's not my heritage too. And another reason for this series is actually laid out for us in the Watchtower 2012, January 15th, pages 31 and 32, in an article entitled, From Our Archives, Preserving Gems from Our Past. It says, Jehovah's people have a very rich spiritual heritage. The fascinating record of that heritage can be gleaned not only from publications, but also from photographs, letters, personal accounts, and artifacts related to our worship, our preaching work, and our history. And in the third paragraph down, it says, the governing body is keenly interested in our theocratic history. In commenting on the need to preserve, document, and pass on our spiritual heritage, one member of the governing body said, to know where we are going, we have to know where we have come from. To that end, writing archives was recently set up at World Headquarters in Brooklyn, New York, and is under the direction of the writing committee. So, the governing body themselves say that it's important that we review our spiritual heritage and find out where we've come from. So, in that spirit, I'm starting this new series of videos. And as I mentioned, the first video will take a look at the book you may, survive, you may Survive Armageddon Into God's New World, which, as I say, was published in 1955. And I'm just going to read a few, <clears throat> a few quotes. I'm going to try not to comment on it too much because hopefully the idea is that um, you can at least know what the book said and then if you want to do your own research afterwards, that's entirely up to you. So, page 12 says, Never before in these 20 centuries of the so-called Christian era had there been such a stupendous witness on one occasion concerning this war with the ominous name Armageddon and concerning what it really means to mankind, especially the generation in which we are now living. With the passing of the years since then, the warning witness regarding the real Armageddon has been greatly expanded worldwide. The seriousness of it deserves the greatest possible witness to all the nations. Its steady approach and its certainty to break forth at an unguarded hour for mankind inside this generation make it urgent that it be proclaimed on the greatest possible scale and that without let up. So just a reminder, this was published in 1955. Pages 13 and 14. The conditions and the events of the world in fulfilment of the great prophet's predictions, the noticeable going forth of the three unclean frog-like expressions inspired by the demons to the kings of the entire inhabited earth, followed by the noticeable gathering of the kings to a modern Armageddon, and the irrepressible giving of a foretold witness concerning Armageddon on a globe-encircling scale, make it certain that this unequalled world catastrophe is not far off. It is a time of all times to consider the evidence at hand. Page 30. Your frail life, sinful as it is, is as nothing compared with justifying Jehovah God to his rightful place in the universe. At Armageddon, your life will count for nothing if you are against his sovereignty over all creation. If you want to survive that most terrific war of all time, you must love Jehovah's universal sovereignty, just as his son Jesus Christ does. You must uphold it and proclaim it and remain true to it at all costs until it is vindicated. Only then may you survive Armageddon. Page 31. 
Many of the present generation of mankind may have the privilege of remaining on earth as long as the earth remains, forever. Pages 51 and 52. In the universal conflicts of Armageddon, the nations of this world will perish forever, including the so-called Christian nations of Christendom. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye peoples. Let the earth hear, and all its fullness, the world, and all that cometh forth of it. For the wrath of Jehovah is against all the nations, and his fury against all their armies. He hath devoted them to destruction, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. And their slain shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up from their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted in their blood. Page 216. The slaughter weapons of the heavenly executioners will hack down untold numbers at the destruction of anti-typical Jerusalem, but the man in linen class and the marked other sheep will not be touched. So many will be slaughtered that it will seem as if no one will finally escape. At Armageddon, Jehovah will cause the human bomb to explode and the members of the United Nations and the peoples of all other nations will fight confusedly among themselves, every man's hand being against his neighbour. Pages 341 and 342. Blood will run deep as the royal avenger of blood on the white horse and his heavenly hosts ride their white horses of righteousness, theocratic warfare into the symbolic great winepress of the anger of God, where the vine of the earth, the visible earthly system, weighted down with wicked offspring has been hurled and the wine press was trodden outside the city the new jerusalem and blood came out of the wine press as high up as the bridles of the horses for a distance of a thousand six hundred furlongs two hundred miles why should not blood run deep and far with over two billion dead was there ever a war of the length of armageddon's duration that left even a billion dead have all the wars of mankind's existence killed directly a total of two billion warriors? The global flood of Noah's day, which the Bible uses as a prophetic type of Armageddon, drowned all humans except the eight in the ark, and the human population must then have numbered many millions. But Armageddon will be a tribulation such as has not occurred from the beginning of the creation which God created until that time and will not occur again. With the members of this generation that will not pass away before Armageddon breaks out, numbering now 2 billion 500 million, and with only the remnant and a larger group of other sheep inside the greater Noah's Ark surviving, the death toll of the war of the great day of God the Almighty will be appallingly all-surpassing too many for the Armageddon survivors to bury. Come on, birds and beasts, have your fill then from the human corpses in retribution for the wanton slaughter of animal and bird life of which the human race has been guilty. Jehovah the great avenger will give you mistreated creatures your day. And thou son of man, thus saith the Lord Jehovah, speak unto the birds of every wing and to every beast of the field Gather yourselves together and come assemble yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, which I sacrifice for you, a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats and of bullocks, all of them fatted beasts of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye are full, and drink blood till ye are drunken of my sacrifice which I sacrifice for you. And ye shall be filled at my table with horses and charioteers, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord Jehovah. Not a human on the side against Jehovah's theocratic organization will survive. None of their dead will be given a decent burial in memorial tombs. Page 343. Some time after the war has killed off all the visible earthly enemy, the land will be cleansed of flesh-stripped, sun-bleached bones by their being collected and put out of sight. Jehovah's decree is, and it shall come to pass in that day, that I will give unto Gog a place there for burial in Israel, the valley of the passers-by to the east of the sea, 
and it shall stop the way of the passers-by. And there shall they bury Gog and all the multitude, and they shall call it Valley of Hammon Gog, meaning multitude of Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, so many will be the slain, that they may cleanse the land, and all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them for renown in the day, that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord Jehovah. And finally, page 344. There will be a total cleansing of the land of unclean enemy bones. No memorial tomb symbolizing hope of a resurrection will be built for these nameless, unidentifiable bones. The name of the city-like organization for bone disposal will celebrate Jehovah's victory over so tremendous a multitude. So I have been reading from the book You May Survive Armageddon Into God's New World. There's the spine, published in 1955. As I say, this is the first episode of a series in which I'll read from uh, older publications and uh, hopefully it will help illuminate our grand spiritual heritage so that Jehovah's Witnesses and former Jehovah's Witnesses can find out where Watchtower's teachings originate from. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, there will be more to follow and thank you for watching.